So this is the Fairrite 2643-251-002 Type 43 Ferrite Core and this is fast becoming the most popular core to wind your own NFED half-wave transformer for 100 watts. And I say 100 watts because this core will quite happily handle uh, FT8 at 100 watts, whereas an FT240-43 it won't. Um, it'll do it for a short period of time, 70 watts, it'll top out there or thereabouts. Now, I was first put onto this core by seeing the videos by Evolair Electronics. And I made a video on this featuring the score, a couple of videos actually, but I did one where I did a number of uh, comparisons of efficiencies using the back-to-back -back method. And a question I've had time and time again is what happens if you actually stack this core? So put two together and you measure the efficiency, what actually happens? Now I've shared my thoughts with a lot of people, what would actually happen when you actually stack them? And pretty much what I think would happen, my hypothesis is has actually happened because I did some uh, experiments with the smaller QRP core which I've had some good success with as well. But nevertheless I thought it was worthwhile to actually make this video. So why would people actually want to stack two of these cores? Well quite simply they want to run more power. Um, this one, as I say, 100 watts FT8, so it's probably going to do a couple of 100 watts SSB. So a couple of these is going to hand, handle, say, UK power limits, four or 500 watts SSB there-ish, maybe 200 watts uh, digital modes. So, again, this core, we'll have a look what we did previously, but it's got a very, uh, I'd say a flat response, flat efficiency from 160 through 10 metres, where it's much the same loss all the way across HF, what's going to actually happen when we do this? Because we've changed the geometry, so it's now longer than it is wide. So let's go and take a look. So if you've been following me at all, um, you'll be aware of the spreadsheet that I've created. Um, I've got a number of cores, um, 14043, 24043, this core, another little QRP core, where I've done some back-to-back -back, uh, efficiency tests. Um, I'll put a link to this spreadsheet down in the description. I'll try and keep it the same link as it was previously, if you've got that saved. But you'll see that I've now got tabs along the bottom. So if you can't see everything, look along the bottom and you'll find the tab um, for the core that you actually want to look at. Now, as for the measurement method, um, I'm quite happy with the back-to-back -back measurement method. Um, there's been some other good videos recently um, and I'll try and, I can't remember his name, but Jan Delta Golf 1, is it Julia Alpha November? He's done some great work where he actually uses a resistor uh, and some calculations and his calculations have tied in within a couple of percent of the back-to-back -back measurement. Um, Manuel uh, Delta Lima 2, Mike Alpha November, I hope I've got that right Manuel. I'll put it on the screen if it's any different. He's done a video as well, basically looking at some of the stuff I've done, some of the stuff Jan's done, and they tie in and he's also done the same. So, a little bit of history, looking at the FT24043, and I should note that these two measurements here, I'm not actually happy with. Um, I've actually, these have been pointed out to me that there's something not right with these, so I'm going to check these, and these were actually um, a three stack, um, and this is where we had the, the close spaced winding, so I'm going to redo these. But these these ones are actually basically what we're looking at here. So we've got a, a, a this is the one that we actually want to look at here, because this is the one with the capacitor. And where we have the 100 picofarad capacitor, this is where we get least losses. So the three stack uh, with um, as a 49 to 1 is actually really quite good. Um, you look at this, you know, we're high 80s all the way through, uh, even nearly 84 on 15. Um, and on 10 metres, you can see where it starts to, to fall off a cliff. And this is going to be something of a pattern. So that's our, our 43 material. If we then look at our 52 material, again, we've got some questionable results here. I'm going to redo these. Um, and apologies, Tom, for not getting these cores back to you because I don't own them. But I'd just like to do this one last experiment. So this is 24052, and you can see while it may handle more power, it's less efficient than the uh, 43 material. So the one that you've all been waiting to see is actually over here. 
Now, I've actually measured it 160 through 10 metres and I don't think I've actually seen efficiencies this good um, on the low bands. Now, if we just go through it, look at, look at these losses, 0 0.17, 0 0.24, 0 0.26, 0 0.36, 1, and then uh, 4.5. So if we translate that into efficiency, so bearing in mind, this is what we're talking about, two of these, on 160, 96.16, on 80, 94.62, on 40, 94.19, on 20, funnily enough, 92.04. That is fantastic efficiency on 20 metres. On 15, it really starts to tail off, 79.25, but 80%, that's still a usable core. But look what happens on 10 metres, it completely falls off a cliff. Now, I would never advocate anyone to use an NFED half wave on 10 metres if you could do something different. Um, not just because the core is so inefficient on uh, 10 metres, is because if you're running, say, an NFED half wave for 40 metres, that's two wavelengths of wire, um, and your pattern is going to be all over the place. Now, I know a number of people that have done experiments where they have put an NFED half wave up, say, against a half wave, a straight, a plain half wave, um, and the half wave just actually kills the NFED half wave. So you could make your... Uh, half wave up with say a single core and just use an actual half wavelength on 10 meters and it'll just be single banded and it'll be very very good so that's what we're actually looking at here but this is actually only half the story um, so that's the losses that we've got or the efficiency that we've got but that's not to say that we can actually make this into an antenna we would need to actually put this into a box something like we've done here so this is the single core Although it wouldn't need to be as fancy as this. I've probably actually got a jig somewhere, a box that I could actually use and turn into an antenna. But we need to connect this up, um, wind it again, connect it up and actually see how it would actually perform as an antenna because, as I say, it doesn't necessarily mean it will antenna. We'd need to have a look at the match on all the bands and the bands may not actually be... Uh, uh, related so where you have the SWR dips where it's resonant may not be in the positions where we want it so we may have to have some compromise again um, so if you have some of these cores it would be great because I don't know when I'm going to have the time if you can actually do this if you can actually make an antenna up and actually give it a go on some of these bands now I'm no, I'm not going to use it on 160 I'm not even going to use it on 80 but certainly on 40 and 20, this is going to be, even if you wound this as a, a dual band antenna for 40 and 20, it's incredibly uh, efficient. Even on 15, it's probably going to be a, a compromise that you're willing to expect, uh, expect or accept, sorry. But what I'm really curious is how much power that this is actually going to handle. So if you've got an amplifier, wind that thing up and, you know, run some FTA and see how much power you can actually get through this. Um, so do it in, in stages. So maybe go up to say 150 watts, run it at that for a little while, go up to 200 watts, run it at that. Now, I'm not advocating running um, high power on FT8, but remember it's a low signal mode, a low power mode. So there we are. Um, a lot of you have been wanting to see this and what the efficiency is. It's pretty much what I expected. Um, if you go back and then compare it to the, take this out, the, 240, 43, you can see that we're a good bit better. Um, so yes, yeah, so looking on 15, you can see that 79 versus uh, 83, so we're four and a bit percent different. I would take these cores overtaking the uh, 240-43 if you can. There they are side by side. Um, so please guys, give it a go. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you can actually make it into an antenna. And uh, I will get to it at some point. Um, if some of you do it and say, well, it's not going to work, I'm not going to do it. But if you've done it, it works. You know, I'll give it a go, certainly once we get to the better weather um, and we'll see how much power that it could handle. There we go, folks. I hope that was of some interest and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now.